my name is Caroline Sanchez. I'm a marine biologist at SPC since 2004. I've been studying marine biology at the University of James Cook in Australia and I've been identifying preys for our Pacific marine specimen bank, but also developing trainings for observers to collect samples at sea and in port. I've been collecting samples, more than thousands of samples so far since 2004 for our Pacific Marine Specimen Bank and I'm here today to share with you my knowledge and my experience. Today we are going to learn how to extract the otoliths from a tuna, cutting the top of the head of the fish using a saw. We are going to need a saw, tweezers, a vial, labels, absorbent paper or piece of cloth, water, and some gloves if you need it. I'm going to show you first how to extract the otoliths from the head only. Here we have a large yellowfin tuna. Then I will extract the otoliths from a whole skipjack tuna. Place the head on the floor or on the table and use your left hand if you are right-handed to stabilize the head. With a saw, I'm going to cut through the head straight downward. I need to make sure the saw goes straight down and not in an angle. You should not cut through the eye, but just above the eye. Approximately two to five centimeters and straight down. If you don't cut deep enough, you can then make another cut to go deeper. Now the top of the head is open. I'm going to place the head so it's towards me. Now I can look into the eye of the fish. This is important because it is easier to find the otoliths like this. The otoliths will be towards the back of the brain. Remove the brain with the back of the tweezers. If there is blood, try to remove the blood by moving the head. When the fish has been spiked by the crew, there may be some blood and pieces of broken bones. Sometimes you will find only one otolith or sometimes both otoliths but maybe with one of them broken. Try to collect all the pieces of the otolith if that is the case. You have to locate the otic canal on one side first. You pull the canal. If it's on the skipjack, while pulling the canal, you will also pull the otolith with its membrane. On larger tuna like an albacore tuna, a yellow fin or a big eye tuna, the otoliths will stay inside the brain cavity. So you will see the hole of the otolith Make sure you place your tweezers in a lateral position to grab the otolith without pushing the otolith further inside the bone. Go gently, very gently to remove the otolith. You pull and then place the otolith on your hand. You do the same thing on the other side because you have two otoliths and they are on each side of the brain. Remove the membrane from the otolith. You can use the tweezers to do this. Make sure you don't lose your otolith while you are doing this. I like to place it on top of my hand. If it's too difficult, you can use your nails to do this. Be careful if you have a small otolith as you can break the tip of it. Be gentle while removing the membrane. Remove the remaining blood or mucus on the absorbent paper. You can put the otoliths inside your mouth to clean them. Of course, you don't have to do this. This is just my own technique. You can use a piece of cloth or absorbent paper to remove the blood but be careful not to break the otolith. Don't place the otolith in your mouth if it's very small and of course, if you're working on a defrosted fish. 
You can also take the time to clean the otoliths in water. Cleaning the otoliths in water is just as effective, but takes longer than placing them in your mouth. Place the otoliths in the vial. Cut your cable to collect the label. And remember, you can also use a plastic label from the cable if you still have some labels available on it. Place the label inside the vial and close it, making sure it's tightly sealed. For a whole skipjack, the technique is similar. But before sampling a whole fish, you always measure the fish using a caliper or any other measuring instrument. Here, I'm using a caliper. I place the top of the caliper against the snoot of the fish and slide the caliper towards the fork of the fish. We have a skipjack measuring 76 cm from the upper jaw to the fork length. I place the fish on its belly and then cut the top of the head horizontally, just above the eye of the fish. Then I cut the section to remove the top of the head. Now the top of the head is open. I'm going to place the head so it's towards me. Now I can look into the eye of the fish. This is important. It is easier to find the otoliths like this because the otoliths will be towards the back of the brain. Remove the brain with the back of the tweezers. As the brain cavity is small, to have a better visibility, I turn the fish on its side to remove the liquid. You have to locate the otic canal on one side first. You pull the canal, and with a skipjack tuna, you have to be careful as the otoliths come out with the otic canal. The otoliths of the skipjack are very small and more fragile than other spaces. Be careful when you are manipulating the otoliths and pay attention during the cleaning process not to break them. Remove the remaining blood or mucus on the absorbent paper. Place the otoliths in the vial. Cut your cable to collect the label. And remember, you can also use a plastic label from the cable if you still have some labels available on it. Place the label inside the vial and close it, making sure it's tightly sealed. That's it for today. You can check the other videos for the Pacific Marine Specimen Bank Sampling Project. Thank you!